page 79, Scale Master. On page 76, they got some more rhythm things involving eighth notes. You can go over that on your own. I'd not do that. At the bottom of page 76, they talk a little bit about technique. I don't really teach much technique in these videos because you need a live teacher really to teach a technique. But they have something in that technique thing that there, which concerns me a little bit, and that's the last bit, the last couple measures of these lines. They want you to transpose it to other keys. If you don't know what a key is, you're lost already. So, but this is the way Alfred seems to want to do this. I suggest you're starting this technique in C position, in the, in the first one in C, and you can do this in both hands, you just have to play the same notes in each hand. If, if the right hand is saying C, E, G, play those in the left hand. And then at the end, if you want to transpose it to D major, you simply go up to the five finger position for D major, and you're playing the same finger numbers. And then E major, you go up again for the E major. You have to know what that is. And you follow the pattern of half steps and whole steps to get that. And then you play these notes in E major. That's how you transpose the I don't like that way of transposing, but that's what they teach to start with to give you an idea that you can play the same thing in multiple keys, and that's fine. That's what they want to do. So you can go over page 76. If you have any questions, be sure and ask. On 78, they're introducing you to C major. I've already encouraged you to go do my C major scale. They use tetrachords. John Thompson uses tetrachords. I hate tetrachords, but we'll talk about them. Tetrachord, tetra means four. It's four notes, and they're next to each other. So in C, we use C, and it's easy. You leave out the thumbs, and that leaves it. It fits. It's very comfortable. It's convenient. And they give you the patterns of whole steps and half steps, because you can use this pattern in any key Use the same pattern and you'll get the major scale. I prefer to think of it all together like I told you before, whole, whole, half, the pattern. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half pattern for the whole scale. doesn't matter what fingers are on it or whether you're using four notes or eight notes or whatever. That's the pattern. But they do that and it's convenient sometimes to do that. Just don't get hung up on tetrachords. C major scale. We already explained it, the pattern of whole steps and half steps and what it is. And I encourage you, as I always have, go do my C major scale video. Do the one octave up and down. Learn the fingering for it. Learn what that feels like because the hands are not doing the same thing all the time. And learn to play that scale. Need to be able to play it eventually without looking at the keyboard. Both hands together, up and down, one octave. Do the wrist and the accents and everything, because that's technique. That I kind of combine that in with the scales. When I was in college, we had these technique, we never had a technique book or a technical exercise per se. It, everything was done with scales and arpeggios, because you need to know those anyway, and any technique you need to learn, you can do with those. So it was just efficient way of doing it. And that's the way I taught my students. I didn't use exercise books. But there is a Hannon book and a Cherney book. I have links to them on my Amazon page if you can get to it. Some foreign countries can't get to my Amazon page. That's Amazon's working on it, I think, but they can't. So I can't help you there. But if you can get to my Amazon page, I have links to those Hannon and Cherney books. They have fun things in them. If you just like to work the fingers, Go for it. Have a ball. And that's about all I had to say about that. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about this scale master thing. You're starting out at, now look at the beginning of this. The clef signs. They're both bass clef. You know, up until now it's been treble clef and bass clef. And you think, why does he keep saying these? Well, because they're not always going to be there. Ta da So they're both bass clef. And you're starting out in the left hand little finger here so you're in C position, but we're using tetrachords because they want, the, in the second measure, they want the right hand to play second finger on the G. Well, that puts you in this position. So we're not in a five finger position, we're in this tetrachord thing. Up 
okay, if that's what they want, then this whole piece is played in this position, down here. Now it has a repeat sign, so we're going to play it twice. And then there's a note at the top, say second time 8VA, which means 8VA, 8 is an octave. Oct means 8, OCT is 8 octave. And it simply means go up an octave. So instead of here, we, we go up and put here. We just go up an octave, that's all it is. On piano it's easy to go up or down an octave. Because everything is laid out this way. So the second time we play it, we're going to play it here. We're going to pretend middle C is here. Is all. Rhythm-wise, you quarter notes and whole notes and half notes. Not a bad thing. I, or it's not too difficult, I hope. The dynamics, you're starting out medium loud, whatever that is. And then the second line, you're going to gradually go up to loud. Take your time because you've got three measures to get to loud. There's not a lot of difference between medium loud and loud. So you have to plan it out. I suggest in the second line, the first measure, stay medium loud. Don't change. In the second measure, you go up just a hair. and That's for the whole measure. Just a hair. And then in the third measure, you go up just a little more for that measure. And then finally, the last note, that's loud. Don't get loud to the last note. Don't get loud too soon. You have to plan that out. It's not easy to do. Now this moving bit is a bit of a problem because you're down here to start and when you end the second line first time you're here when you repeat you gotta go up here to here. There's no rest or anything it's between phrases you lift up that gives you a little bit of silence and during that little bit of silence you gotta move. So you're coming from this note to this note we practice hand movements in piano. We work this out. Let's go here to here. It's the left hand you got to get in place. Don't worry about the right so much. If you want, just get the, get the left hand over here while you're playing that note, the last note in the piece here. You can move the left hand up and have it there ready to go, hovering above the keys so that when you're done, you're right there. And then as the left hand's playing, you can move the right hand up where it goes. It's easier to move one hand at a time than both if you can. So that's what I would recommend you go ahead and do. You finish the first time out here, and then move up here and be ready to go. And that works out too. I probably won't to play with me. I'll go ahead and move them both because that's fun and I like to do that. But I would recommend to start do that way. Let's try this together very slowly. To double check our notes, oh, the rhythm shouldn't be a problem, but let's do the notes. So, go ahead and put your hands where they go, down here to start. One, two, ready, go. One. and do the duet part. So I'll do the part at the bottom and you do your part to do the notes and the rhythms and you know remember to go up an octave the, the second time. So I'll give us four counts. Put your hands where they go here. You're going to need two keyboards for this now. One, two, ready, go.